praise the Lord today. Let's praise the Lord today. Wake up praising Him today, for this day, for another day, to glorify His name, to be thankful for all that He does. He's sovereign. There are no second choices about it. He's sovereign in everything that he does. We can't point the finger at anything or anyone else. God has done it. That's what we need to say. He's sovereign because he can stop things from happening. He cannot let them happen. He cannot let people do the things they do, or he can let them do the things they do. He's sovereign. And he's always bringing it about to test us and show us our own reaction to things. And he's after a right reaction in our heart. That our life be an example of Christ. That's what he's after. The name of this devotional, Each Bitter in Our Cup. This is by Ruth Bryan, once again. I'm very amazed reading her writings, how she turned affliction into something precious from the Lord, because it did a work in her. It showed her her own heart through the affliction, God was doing a work, and she thanked him and praised him for it, and that's what we all need to do, the same thing. In Proverbs 29, 15, okay, now we're going to learn some stuff today, so listen up, pay attention. Let me just pray real quick. Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch this little devotional, Lord. You will pierce the hearts of people, Lord, that they will see and understand what you're saying. And they will also see and understand that you're sovereign, that all things have to come through you in order for them to get to us. Help us all understand that, Lord. And I pray that you will just touch people as they listen and give them understanding in Jesus' name. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Now that's talking about discipline, isn't it? The rod. And the rod there means correction. A stick for punishing. And reproof means chastisement, rebuke, correction, reproved. Okay. Now what does the Lord say? In Hebrews 12, 8. But if ye be without chastisement, or in other words, if you be without education, training, correction, whereof all are partakers, all of God's children, true children, are partakers of chastisement at one time or another. Okay, then are ye bastards. But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards. You're illegitimate. You're polluted. You're not true. You're false. And not sons. But if ye be without chastisement, correction, whereof all are partakers, all of the children of God are partakers, then are ye bastards. If you are without chastisement, you're illegitimate, polluted, false, and not sons or daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ. How plain can we be here? How plain can the Lord be with his word? He tells us right here. Now, in the previous verse, 
Proverbs 29.15, the rod and reproof give wisdom. Wisdom. The ability to make good judgments based on what you have learned from your experience or the knowledge and understanding that gives you this ability. And what did it say? The Lord learned obedience by the things he suffered. And so it will be for us. Now this is a good thing in Proverbs 29:15, the rod and the reproof give wisdom. That's a good thing. Cuz we learn by what we experience, just like Jesus. And we learn obedience, too, by what we suffer. So these are good things. This is a really good little devotional because it's bringing us back to sinner <laughs> about God is sovereign. And he knows what he's doing. And when he allows this in our life, these type of things, it's for a purpose. All the ways of the Lord are right ways, and we lose much sweetness for lack of resignation to His will in all things. I'm going to read that again. All the ways of the Lord are right ways, and we lose much sweetness for lack of resignation to his will in all things. While we fret against the cross, it is felt the heavier. And that's true, isn't it? While we fret against the cross, it is felt the heavier. I believe, too, that we are losers by not receiving all events as from him. I'm going to read that again. I believe, too, that we are losers by not receiving all events as from him. Just like Job. Look at all what happened to Job. But as you notice, as the account is in the word, he, the devil had to get permission from the Lord in order to do these things. And that's exactly what happens with us. The Lord will use many means to get his point across. And he will allow the devil to do certain things to get his point across and to test us. But it's all from his hand. He's looking over it. Everything just can't come in and bombard us and happen to us just for no reason and without God even knowing it or having any control over it. No. That's not true. God is in complete control and we need to know that and understand it. And be resigned to His will. Be submitted to His will. By looking at second causes, we come into great perplexity. And whatever creatures may intend against us, our Heavenly Father has some high purpose of grace in all that He allows to befall us. He has a high purpose of grace. So what is He doing? He could be showing us our own heart what's in our own heart that we haven't seen before maybe by the circumstances he allows in our life and we feel those things coming up inside of us and just a resistance and a bucking up and he's showing us see that see that rebellion there see that stubbornness there are you really submitted to me like you told me you are are you really submitted to my will 
Well, let me just show you that stubbornness and that rebelliousness that's coming up in this circumstance that I'm allowing to happen in your life. See, but that's grace, isn't it? Isn't that grace and the love of God that he would do that, that he would show us that and not let us go on thinking something that's not true? The Lord digs very deep. He goes deep. He goes to the root. And that's good, isn't it? That's very good. He could prevent, now listen, he could prevent every wrong, and he would, were not each bitter in our cup essential for his own glory and our real profit. He could prevent every wrong thing from happening to us. But if it wasn't necessary, in other words, that bitter cup, if it, that was not necessary and essential for his own glory and our real profit, then he wouldn't let it happen, would he? Because he is a merciful, loving God. And remember, his ways are not our ways either. He knows what he is doing. He sees the end from the beginning. He sees the future. <laughs> he sees it all. So in his sovereignty, he allows these things to come our way for his glory, for our good. We have to start looking at it that way because that is the way that it is. The assurance of this has been very healing to my spirit many times under blights and losses and also under mental wounds from those that dear to me. I feel there is some personal lesson in all these things. And often, when I would have felt ready to censure the instrument, in other words, the instrument that's being used to do these things, I have discovered some pride or other lurking evil in myself, which the Lord aimed at by the troubling circumstances, just what I got through saying, intending by His Spirit to bring it to light and rebuke it. Now, isn't God loving? And here she says, now this lady went through it now. And often when I would have felt ready to censure the instrument. In other words, the instrument that was being used. I have discovered some pride or other lurking evil in myself. Which the Lord aimed at by the troubling circumstance. Intending by his spirit to bring it to light and rebuke it. So he knows. Do you know sometimes God will push our buttons by the circumstances he allows? Because he knows just what will bring that thing right up to the surface. Because he knows there's something in there that maybe we haven't given to him, surrendered to him or whatever. And so he says, well, we're going to get that out. We're going to get that taken care of. So let me just let this circumstance happen. I'm going to let it come up and I'm going to show you it's there. And see, when he does that, we need to repent and say, yes, Lord, you're right. Agree with him. It won't do you any good not to agree with him when he shows you something like that. So we all need to agree with him when he shows us these things. And thank him for doing it. Thank him for creating these circumstances to show us ourself. Thus has my mouth been stopped and brought to kiss the hand which held the rod. However inexcusable in itself that rod might be. 
however unnecessary we think that Rod was. What happened? And in her case, too, and in ours, too, it stops our mouth. It's like a shut-the-mouth thing. What can you say? What can you say? And then it brought her to kiss the hand of the Almighty God that held the rod. Remember, if you're a true son and daughter of the Lord, you are going to be chastised. And that's a good thing. As a matter of fact, that's a wonderful thing. Because then we all know we're not bastards. We're not illegitimate, polluted, false. But we're true sons and daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's good. That's a good thing. Also, when the heart is thus humbled, the wrong of others against us seems but secondary to our own, albeit ours may be against the Lord only. Now, this is very interesting right here, because when the Lord uses an instrument, no matter who they might be, to humble us, and to push that button, so to speak, that the Lord knows is there, we're trying to get rid of that button, he knows it's there, so he's going to use this instrument to bring it out. But then what are we doing? We're pointing at that person. They did me wrong. They said this wrong. They acted this way wrong. But then what happens? That nastiness comes up from within us that God's trying to show us through that circumstance. And then... If we don't repent, we start getting bitter and resistant against God. And then where's the sin lying? <laughs> it's lying against God. We're sinning against God in that case. Our attitude is bad toward God. And isn't that the tendency when God shows us something to try to look out there for the cause and the Lord says, no, you're not going to be able to look anywhere. It's in you. It's in us. The cause. And that's what he wants to get rid of. We need to repent when he shows us stuff. Say, Lord, remove this. Whatever you have to do in my life, remove the root of this, Lord. I don't want it in my life. I don't want to feel this way. I don't even want to have any buttons that anybody can push anymore, Lord. Remove the buttons, even. Oh, let us seek to be so instructed of the Lord that the rod and reproof may give wisdom. Let us aim at confiding love in Him, for He is infinite wisdom and needs none of our interference. I just have to smile reading this because God is so good. He's such a loving Father. You know, if you have a child and you don't discipline that child, that child's going to grow up to be a spoilt, rotten brat. And is always going to want to have the handout and everything given to them in, on a silver platter. They're not going to ever learn any kind of lessons at all. When a parent really loves their children, they will discipline them. And they will withhold from them as well things that are not good for them it's not good for a child to have everything they want they don't learn a single thing and they turn out to be a brat spoiled rotten brat their whole life and treat others that way too as if they deserve everything from everybody no. And just like the Lord God Almighty, He is not going to do that with us either. 
He gives us all good things, good things that he considers are good for us. And if he considers they are not good for us, he will withhold. He does not want us to be spoiled rotten brats. He wants us to be responsible adults, loving adults, helping adults, learning in our experiences. And when he sees that we've gotten out of line, he, he's going to chastise us if we're a true son or daughter. And that's good. That's a good thing. So today, let's have this understanding and let's have this mindset that God is sovereign. He allows things in our life. Listen, he's the author and finisher of everything. He's the controller over life and death. He's the controller over everything. No matter what anyone says, contrary to that, he is the controller over every circumstance and over everything. Now, granted, if we go out and deliberately sin, there's going to be consequences to that. That's true. That's true. We have to reap what we've sown. And sometimes that's a long reaping. But when we repent and turn away from our sin, the Lord removes that sin as far as the east is from the west, and he forgets it. So let us walk today in humble humility under the mighty hand of God kissing the hand that has the rod in it if we need that because it all comes from him and it's all sovereignty <laughs> we have to know that it's sovereignty if we disobey him there's consequences. Okay. Person disobeyed him. Okay. They repented. Wonderful. But there's still consequences. It still has to play out. But they're forgiven. But hey, then should come the thankfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me that. Thank you for showing me my heart. Thank you for showing me, Lord, because... Maybe I was lifted up in pride a little bit too much. And I know you don't want any pride in our life. So thank you for the things you do. Thank him. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will seal this word into the hearts of the people listening. And you will not let the enemy steal the seed, Lord. That you will let it be planted and grow up and bear fruit. In Jesus' name.